Some people think that sort of just by leaving the European Union, everything was, was going to happen. Leaving the European Union gave us an opportunity to change the way we did things and distance ourselves uh, uh, from European laws. Well, none of that has happened. The only benefit we've had is that we'd now be paying 30 billion a year as our contribution to the European Union. And as strained as the Treasury says it is, that would have been a big, a big hole in its, uh, in its budget. So at least we're not doing that. But, but uh, we have one, you know, we have the, the, the second biggest uh, financial centre in the world and, uh, and people are, are deciding to, to list in the United States rather than mm. the UK. Uh, 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 co companies are, are going to AstraZeneca decide to build a factory in Northern Ireland because of the increase in, in corporation tax that this government's introduced. This is a very anti-business government. And for a conservative government to be like that, it's quite, it's quite astonishing. So, in your view, to put it bluntly, we've bogged it up. Um, can you see yourself supporting the Conservatives as they are now? Will you be giving them money? Will no, you certainly, that? certainly not. I can't give money to someone who who, uh, who doesn't stand for anything I believe in. The, of course, we're coming up to an election. They think, well, there's a chance of a change. But what the change is likely to be a Labour government, which are going to be even worse. They want to increase government expenditure to a greater degree. They want to increase, and therefore will have to increase taxation. And they say, well, it's fine. We're going to take it off the rich. The rich won't be here mm. uh, for them to take it off them because they're already leaving in droves as a result. I am a great collector of unusual f political statements. Yes. And in my collection, there's now something from an article you wrote very recently in the Daily Telegraph and I yes. read it verbatim. Liz Truss was right. Yes, she so, was. And I mean, what she wanted to do was right. Unfortunately, she didn't go about it in, in the right way. And you don't present a budget without presenting the arithmetic behind it, which she failed to do. If she'd waited a couple of months and got all, uh, ducks, all in the row. ducks in a row, mm. the, 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 I think there'd been a very different result because basically she's talking about growing the economy, uh, uh, making some supply-side reforms, lowering taxation to create... Uh, to, uh, to create the incentives, both for companies and individuals, uh, and that's all been that's all been blown away. Why should people work harder when uh, at, at 100,000 a year, which uh, you know some people say it's rich, you know, people on 100,000 are not rich, you're suddenly paying 60% marginal mm -hmm. rate of tax. People so, between 50,000 and 100,000 a year are paying 40% tax, and they're receiving still receiving benefits. So, would you have preferred a parallel universe in which Truss and Kwarteng had acted more stealthily, more slowly, yes. and stayed in power, and there hadn't been a Sunak Hunt government yes. to replace them. You would have preferred yes, that. Yes, much, much, much preferred that. And, and of course, the you know they insulted the governor of Bank of England for two months before they came to power. So I think he got his own back. He announced quantitative tightening the day of the mini budget, mm -hmm. which wasn't a very clever thing. Uh, to do, and I think he could have entered into the market in a much more effective way than he did. Uh, but the whole, the Treasury and, uh, and the staff, the Treasury have been running the same type of policies for the last 15 years, uh, initially with Brown, then through the co coalition government, and now the Conservative government, uh, which has delivered subpar growth. And uh, something has to change, otherwise we'll carry on on the, sa on the same treadmill. You backed Boris Johnson for a long time, you helped him uh, you spoke at pro-Brexit meetings. What's your assessment of him now? Well, I think it's I think it's very sad and very tragic because he's uh, whatever one may say about him, he's still a huge figure. Uh, if it, it was he, de he's the person who delivered. Not only did he win the Brexit vote, helped to win the Brexit vote. Probably, if he hadn't been there, it might not have happened. He he uh, he had a parliament against him. Who, uh, who removed the no-deal Brexit from the table, so he had no powers of negotiation. He still delivered a Brexit, uh, with, with quite some flaws, of course. Uh, then he won a huge majority uh, at, at the next election, so he's a huge figure. Jo Boris Johnson comes into the room, and you notice, you are any other politician around now, you, wouldn't, you don't, don't, doesn't create the same impression or impact. He's and our he's a huge journey, figure. He might be said. And it's sad. I mean, it's sad and tragic. I think tragic even, even for this country. Um, he is nonetheless now completely out of Conservative Party parliamentary politics. He's, you know, he's been pushed out. It's very hard to see him coming back, given the mood of the Tory party now. Would you back a, a new party of the right, maybe with Boris Johnson in it? 
Yes, that's certainly back a new party of the right. And and if there's a Labour government which enters into coalition with Liberals, we might get proportional representation, which would then uh, give create room for a proper party uh, of the right. It probably have to be in coalition all the time, but at least mm. it could force through some of its if, policies. If Boris Johnson and and Richard Tice came along and scratched their necks and said, any ch- any chance of a little cash? Rocco, you might you might be inclined to say yes. Well, I'd I'd I'd, I'd be willing to support, and I'm, I'm willing to support individuals in Parliament who have the right views and right mm. ideas. And I don't see why I shouldn't do that with a party that that that, uh, that did so as well. Coming back to the more immediate question of your campaign to get the VAT decision yes. reversed, and looking at the list of people who've signed the letter alongside yourself, all sorts of big big. Companies, British Airways, the Royal Opera House, Heathrow Airport, Harvey Nicks, the Savoy, Victoria Beckham, Marks and Spencers and so on. Given the, the scale of support for this, do you think you're going to win this one? I don't know. You know, I think that for the time being they've kicked it in, the government's kicked it into touch. You know, we will consider it. That was the the remark, and they said that, and they said they can't do anything until the budget or in October. So I don't know, but uh, we'll keep the pressure up. Uh, the mail are going to continue to run the campaign, uh, and I'm very hopeful because it's the right thing for the country, and it won't make a slightest bit of difference. Actually, it will probably add to the to the Treasury's coffers rather than yes. reduce them.